But worship is participatory, where everyone brings his best offering of sacrifice to God. May all of us realize this and bring before God our personal offering of worship and participate in this collective responsibility together.
The first English service of the UPC leader was Kreli Kivichosa and speaker was Mr. Kiramodi. Many members of the church and many other friends from other churches, including non-noble friends, who were exposed to the evangelical messages were born again in Jesus Christ. Especially, I remember Lana Toy, Muita Motil, Dr. Sino Likisi, Mr. Lomalo, Mr. Kian Angami, Dr. Sidney, Dr. Kinu, Utsari, Mr. Moashusa, and many others, and occasionally Governor LBC and Chief Secretaries and high officials used to participate in the program. Salim is a youthful and free service new car. Presents us as a support as a TV. UBC Refrain. Dangal
Due to constraints of time, allow me to simply say thank you. Thank you for your prayers. They have reached us and blessed us. Thank you for your contributions. Your generosity has helped us immensely in meeting all the needs of this occasion with much to spare as well. And thank you for coming here and joining us in our celebrations. From various churches belonging to different tribes in Kohima, across Nagaland, and even beyond, your presence has really made this occasion meaningful, colorful, pleasant, and of course, blessed. We are also grateful to the media personnel. To Tenebeta, who saw a direct and unremember. Romyabo, to Tepo, who saw a direct genu, direct tenu. Gorimyabo, Gerim, to Tepo, who saw a mepet in the new mepet benu. Gorimyabo, direct benu, who saw a poor, Bobo Seki is a good thing for this year. Did you read more history? The true fruit of a leader is not followers. Is it? The true fruit of a leader is other leaders. Is it? The true fruit of a church is not so much its members, while well, that is partly true, but the true fruit of a church is other churches. It's a little bit here. Musulmano, hoha, kemal hagatul, nunumo, nipu zayelah, kehu kekra, koko kekra, fellowship kekra, ungo kehu nunu parking lah, hoha zocheli, kehu, ungo kehu seeds or kete, fruits or kete, little bit. Ungo chesa ibo biro, from generation to generation. A story to proclaim, is it? A story to proclaim. Krista kapele hoa, Christianity hoa, sede keli tiki terienu Rome mekoa Krista me patsus sagetsa. Teri tiche AD 312 tiki Rome meke diu Constantine we jusupeleli. Jadi Kristen sudah isi dulu Romia ko sehingga betul we Christian sehingga cerita cer. Mu Konstantin ya AD 330 di kipu ya capital lu Konstantin Kons Rome dulu shift sesepo Konstantinopel lu so AD 33 ki isi di tiga Kristen se Konstantinopel hawa Romia sehingga Muka di kapitul semua. Mu Konstantin, Konstantinopel, kehukit zaman kezat tu, hati ki seni. Muka kehuk kezat tu, hal halira. The Church of the Holy Wisdom, capital of 
the Roman Empire, the Empire of Rome, and in the capital was the biggest cathedral in the world. Mujetiu nu zasheri kefu hawa kaza. Mu Constantinople hawa liro Istanbul, nu de Turkina. De jetiu nu kefu hawa zasheri kefu hawa liro the mosque of the Holy Wisdom. From generation to generation, if the story is not proclaimed and if the story is not passed, the faith and the church will also die. Today, 123 years later, 60% of Christians live in the global south, only 40% in the global north. By 2050, 75% of all Christians will live in the global south and only 25% will live in the global north. When it comes to Protestant Christianity, in 1900, 90% of all Protestants lived in the global north. 90%, only 10% lived in the global south Protestants. Today, 75% of all Christians live in the global south. And only 25% are in the global north. The faith has spread all over the world. But it has not spread from one generation to the next generation. Muka huha kidi existeyata. The church exists by mission, just as fire exists by burning. Where there is no mission, there is no church. C.S. Lewis, the church exists for nothing else but to draw men to Christ, men and women to Christ. If the church is not doing that, then all the cathedrals, all the clergy, all the missions and all the sermons and even the Bible itself are simply a waste of time. So let's just a whole mission. No professor of the no. Ah, a crow was that as I said. So you did. Here you know the primacy of the story that we proclaim. There they call us soon. Pugatum Lugo, Kedi Puka. Paul at Rita of Kerio Kerpenu, 15 3 you. Paul says, For I deliver to you as of first importance. I deliver to you as of first importance what I have received. Give me first. Because this is the gospel of God. It is the gospel of God. But can say gospel? I don't have a lesson. I can say it in it. Can say for God. Number one, it is the simplest story ever told. John three sixteen. From God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Simple. Three points. God loves you. God sends us. God saves the believer. Sir. Check one in chapter. It is of first importance I deliver to you. Get it what? Christ died. Christ was buried. Christ was saved. It is a simple story. But it is also the deepest story. It is the deepest story. It is the story of angels and demons. Good and evil, truth and falsehood, sin and salvation, sinners and saints, rebellion and reconciliation, death and life. Man, yucky. It encompasses everything. So it is the biggest story, but it is also the baddest story. Can set us or something. They keep Zulu Makash call. So there's a Makash call. A call. Get it? Jesus who creeps. Get when you can you to do book can you create it a lot of create a lot of book to create a Tragedy turns into triumph. So it is the saddest story, 
but the happiest story. It is the strangest story ever told. Let's say that fairy tales, whatever you call it, prayer, what did you begin? Dragons, mythological devil prayer, folk tales, whatever prayer. Bible was a bad devil. Did you believe in it? The focus. Strange, unbelievable. And a strange ending. Gukriwa, Hiroshi, Kawaki. Suspense storyboard. Detective storyboard. You know, let out, 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 let out. It is also the loveliest story. The most romantic story. Ahayo, I tell you, you know, Musa Dino. Verse Ahayo, like a Sabah. Isaiah. He has said here, Isaiah 43, 4. God says, because you are precious in my eyes. You are precious in my eyes. And you are honored. And I love you. To be a Christian is to be wrapped in the righteousness of Christ. And placed near the heart of God. That is how. And it is the greatest story that can ever be told. The primacy, the greatness, the importance of the story we proclaim. Make a But what is the posture towards the story that we proclaim? Why king against the king? Why attitude do? What will our attitude and our posture be towards this story that we proclaim? All I put it, the posture of the world is this. Towards the gospel, the posture of the world is it is stumbling block, capricious, and it is foolishness. Foolishness. And it is foolishness. Paul, did you Agrippa, King Agrippa, Judani, did you? Mu governor Festus, Uniam Hobza. Paul Governor Festus, the governor of the Roman Empire in Judea. Paul Your great learning has driven you to madness. This foolishness, onyare. That is the posture of the world. But secondly, what is the posture that we have towards ourselves as we proclaim this gospel? Look at your voice. It's so good. Kilikidi hawa. Tetze hawa. Sekazara. Pohole kote kote. Tsepu tetze. I came in weakness and in fear and in much time. In Akhaksas said it, Michias said it, bears on your book of war. Michias. We are jars of clay. Mojo, what do you see? How that's a shizzle. Come at you. Pamuza. Yet from your book, said that's a how hot Michias for. That is the posture that we have towards ourselves. But Paul says in Romans 1, I am under obligation. Romigo, go. Good evening. I am under obligation. Paul says, I am under obligation. Paul says, I in Cyprus, he was opposed. In Antioch, he was contradicted, reviled, persecuted, and driven out for the gospel. In Iconium, he was mistreated, and people tried to stone him. 
In Lystra, he was actually stoned and he was dragged out of the city and they thought he was dead and they left him there. In Philippi, he was beaten and imprisoned. In Thessalonica, he was chased out. In Berea, he was smuggled out. In Athens, he was mocked. In Corinth, he was considered a fool. In Ephesus, he was resisted. In, in Jerusalem, he was beaten up again and arrested. In Caesarea, he was tried before the governor and the king. And in Rome, he was finally beheaded. Why did Paul suffer so much for the gospel? Because he says, because I am under obligation. No obligation gets a higher. Dear higher. For talking about Greek media earlier on. Number one, preaching the gospel, spreading the gospel is our duty. We have no choice. The church has no choice. It is a command. But secondly, it is a debt. Kapu forgets the Indian said. I am indebted to proclaim the gospel. A kapu for that. Give me the kapu for the other. You give a piece of kapu for this year, kapu for that. But kapu, show up and watch it, kapu for that. Then we get people know. I tell the people know the kapu. Can you, you know, Paul says, I am eager to preach the gospel. Where Punatol, because that's in the chorus, say, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Why? Because of the power of the story. So, uh, my name is Kivi uh, Achalegise. I belong to Union Baptist Church Kohima and uh, I am uh, the convener of the Golden Jubilee celebrations. Our church was started as the Golden Jubilee suggests 50 years ago in 1973. Those were the times when uh, there were not too many churches in the town. And so the, there was a long felt need that a church should be set up in the vicinity of the, the town area. And that's how, uh, based on that uh, felt need, uh, some leaders came together and somehow established the church. And it has been a very good uh, progress so far with the Lord's help. And we are celebrating 50 years today. So how many members do you come in here? Uh, there are two things here. If you talk about members, that may be about uh, six to seven hundred. But the people that come together in fellowship, they are about a thousand plus. Because as you know, Union Baptist Church, in short UBC, is uh, right in the marketplace. And people from all sides of Kohima, north, south, east, west, they all come. And that's how we are blessed. And therefore, the attendance is normally good. For one thing, you might call this a five-year project, in the sense that uh, the Jubilee Planning Committee was formed five years ago. And at that time, we were even sometimes jokingly saying, isn't it too early? Because what we plan now may become obsolete in some ways five years hence. So such uh, feelings were there. But in retrospect, planning ahead is always good. Because although the real work started maybe about a little over a year ago, the many years of preparation, it helped us to keep focused, keep us well aware of the main event, so to say. So it helped us. And so, starting ahead, planning ahead is always good. And uh, when the planning committee was formed, we immediately started uh, forming various committees. We started with 15 committees and which later became uh, 20 committees, catering to so many other uh, activities. And so, that's how gradually we uh, formed. And one thing, is that uh, when the year of the Jubilee came, 
2023. Uh, the church made a very nice program of um, making a monthly theme that is attuned to the theme of our celebration, which is uh, generation to generation, we will praise him. So, uh, basing on that theme, we had uh, every month a separate, so to say, uh, a theme that relates to that theme. And that helped us to keep our attention and our concerns on uh, what to expect, what to work for, uh, for the main jubilee. Of course, many people helped in establishing the church, that goes without saying, but there were 10 uh, stalwarts who we call as our founding members. So we started with 10. But uh, before the Jubilee, uh, but before the Jubilee could happen, uh, nine members went away, left with one. And long ago, uh, almost few years after our uh, church was established, one member left us. So that was the uh, alteration of numbers. Started with 10, soon we became 9, and now that we are celebrating the occasion, it has become just 1. So that's how 9 and 1 <laughs> uh, numbers, as far as the um, founding members were concerned. There's another interesting aspect of our celebration. While we were planning for the program, and when it came to the time when we had to choose speakers, uh, we felt that uh, this is a generation to generation celebration. And UBC, by the grace of God, has uh, raised up so many uh, good leaders, many of whom have gone out of our church. You know, there was a time when um, we felt that we are losing so many good people, so many good leaders. But ultimately, it has turned out to be a blessing. Because unless people go out, uh, you can't really progress in the real sense. So we are very happy that uh, we decided that uh, so many of our uh, church members have become leaders. They have become reverends and serving as pastors elsewhere or evangelists. So among them, we said, uh, let us choose our speakers from among them, which would be a, a good testimony to how our church has progressed uh, in the mission of the church. So that was how the decision was made for our own members, former members, to be speakers. Mm. Frankly speaking, I think street preaching was done more at the initial years. It doesn't mean that uh, uh, we don't do it anymore. We still do plenty of them, especially during festivities, Christmas and other occasions. But we do feel that since we are a church in the center of the, the city, we have to uh, become uh, more innovative in our reaching out to people. And that definitely includes street speaking. Uh, and the, in the uh, some of the services we had before the function, some of our elders, they brought their memories back to how street preaching distribution of pamphlets were done in the early years. And they have encouraged us to do much more of them. So we will definitely look into it so that uh, our methods, our ways of preaching the gospel is more varied and far-reaching. Jubilee Choir is also another, <laughs> this time, so many things are interesting. And this Jubilee Choir is composed of uh, three, four generations. At least a few generations. The youngest was 18 years old, I think. The eldest is 60. Which means that uh, not only members of our church, the age was really spread out, but there were many members in the choir who were former members of the church, but who over the years, either through marriage or through uh, the call of occupations, they have gone out. 
But this time, we have come together again in a big way. And uh, I think uh, there is one aspect of the celebration which will be remembered for a long time. So the, the church choir is a combination of uh, so many people. Beginners is also the same thing. Uh, the name beginner is sometimes confusing. Some people were thinking that uh, some young children were going to come up and sing. And we were uh, jokingly saying that uh, we have become very old people but acting like children again. But in a way it is true because uh, beginners is also a combination of people almost like the choir. So uh, people who had come from uh, this time in the beginners uh, group, they had come from as far as Dimapur, of course, but even as far as Peren. They remember the early days. This group of people were the people who were in the singing group in the initial years of the church. So that's how the beginners, the name beginners came up. Kohima is basically a small Nagaland and uh, so many different uh, kinds of people come, come to Kohima, live here. Of course, UBC in that sense, um, initially there were two services, Tengime speaking group and the English group. At that time, people from all tribes used to come. Right now, it has become a little more of a Tengime speaking church, but we do have another uh, uh, another part of our church which we call the Parukom, which is a church that caters to the needs of all types of people who can speak and understand English and come together. So in that sense, it is both a Tengime speaking church as well as a cosmopolitan one. And here we cater to mostly young people coming from different uh, districts who are studying here also and uh, who have made UBC uh, their church. Uh, Listra is uh, led by people who were who had so many talents and skills, especially in music. And there were also people who were committed to the Lord. Is that is not that they can just sing, but they can sing with a purpose. And therefore, their music, as well as their lifestyle, was a great uh, attraction to young people. And so they have done a great service in as far as youth service is concerned. So we are grateful to them. And as you can see, the four people, uh, not the four people, the people who sang this time, one was missing, of course, he sadly uh, passed away. All the others are still there, very active, and three of them were reverence. And one is an international preacher, so to say. So we can say that they have been consistent in their faith and in their um, uh, practice of the gospel. In an occasion like this, fundraising is definitely a big issue. So we're a little concerned because our fund requirements happen to be quite high. But we were surprised that uh, even uh, a year before the celebration, our, our fun problems were over. And so we were saying that now we can devote our time and efforts to other aspects of the celebration because fun is already there. Now, over and beyond that, even well-wishers and other churches, they have contributed so much. And therefore, this time, as we were saying uh, uh, in, the, in, our, in, in our service yesterday, uh, we had enough and much to spare. That's the financial aspect of it. But even more important, if we say help from other churches, is definitely their goodwill and their presence. Because in a function like uh, Jubilee, one good measure of success is whether friends and well-wishers came in good numbers and they did so i think that's uh, the most important aspect of help uh, or let us say the way they have honored our jubilee
there are so many things to say here, but uh, let me just say one aspect. <clears throat> um, few years ago, leaders of, a, of our church uh, discussed one issue, the location of the church. Because, uh, as you can see, we don't have much space. Um, the church is growing, and it, as it should, but uh, along with it, the seating capacity, for one thing, is becoming a little less if everybody is to go in and have uh, corporate worship, so to say, with everybody. And also the parking issue is there, which is a big problem. And so at one point of time, uh, we discussed, should we shift to another place? And we thought about it for some time. But later on, we realized, as some of our leaders have uh, reminded us, that UBC is a church in the marketplace. It has become a, a trademark for us. And uh, when we need churches in the marketplace to cater to, the, to everybody who passes by, why should we think of going somewhere in the outskirts? That itself may have its advantages. But once our church is there in the middle of the city, we should never shift. Rather, we should uh, think of ways and means uh, to help people in whatever way we can. And therefore, for example, one uh, small program we had a few weeks before the celebrations was to uh, invite all the people who, who does business in and around the church vegetable vendors, small shop owners, and things like that. And there was a very uh, blessed and profitable time. And we realized more and more that this is a place in the marketplace to stay. So probably we will never think of shifting our location anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, if I could just uh, end with one thing. Two, okay, let us say three things. Uh, which we have realized. One is plan well ahead for occasions like this because although we may feel that five years is too much, it may be a little more, maybe a little less depending on uh, what occasion it is. Always planning ahead is good because as I said, though the work started just about for a year, the real work is just a year and a little over that but uh, it keeps us focused. Secondly, um, it is good to make programs even before occasions like this on themes that are related to the actual occasion because that way our thoughts and in many cases even our actions are geared towards celebrating something which is very meaningful. And thirdly, which is uh, common knowledge to everybody, but I still feel that it is to be remembered, is to allocate the right work to the right people. That's how work gets done. We have realized that. Because uh, uh, as one headmaster was, uh, one successful headmaster said, was asked, how do you measure a success? And the headmaster of this successful church, uh, school said, I measure my success by the less and less time I am required, you know, meaning that everything, everybody is doing their job properly. So something like that we experienced this time. Everybody did their job uh, in the right way, smoothly, and that's how our celebration we feel is a grand success. All glory to God, of course. <laughs>